All right guys, Keepa variations. Everything you need to know about them is gonna be covered in this video. So definitely watch to the end to make sure you don't miss anything. And the reason why I think I can tell you the best way to read them is because I've sold over $2 million on Amazon and half of that was shoes. All right, getting right into it, here we are on the Amazon page and I have Seller Amp and Keepa. And I have the paid version of Keepa and we're just gonna be configuring Keepa right now. So I'm gonna show you guys, if you haven't seen Keepa before, this might be kind of confusing, but basically we're just gonna set up every, and go through every single setting, right? So I'm just gonna unclick all these settings. So you're gonna unclick sales rank, buy box, new, all of these different settings. We'll start from fresh and then we'll just go from here showing you guys what each thing does in the variations and really just how to read a keep a graph, right? So just getting right into it. So we have the sales rank. So I'm going to take that on. So sales rank. So when you're, you, when you're looking at keep a graphs and you're looking at the sales rank, sales rank, it just tells you basically a kind of gauge of how well a product sells and the drops on variation listings don't necessarily mean a sale occurred. I've seen a lot of variation listings where there will be tons of humps, but the item doesn't sell. That happens. There's no exact one way. If somebody tells you that, that's not correct, right? I've sold items with millions of sales rank before and it, you know, they've sold, they've sold slower, but they've sold. So with variation listings specifically, the sales rank isn't a very good key indicator to look at. So just getting right through that. Then we got buy box. So buy box is a pretty decent indicator because you can just kind of see, you know, the current price that it's selling at. And we'll kind of get into how this works with the other settings in a second. But let's see here. So let's do the rating. So rating also matters uh, let me see my bad review count matters a lot too. So review count and we'll go into the variations tab and kind of dive into this, but review count is did the customer leave reviews on this product, right? So just looking at, did the customer leave a review? If a customer leave a review, that means this product did sell. And we'll look at that in just a second. And we have the new offer count. This by far is one of my favorite features to look at when trying to make decisions on buying a product when there it's on a variation because if you see the new offer count say there's like right here right there's 13 sellers right there there's 13 sellers and then it drops down to 12 right so the thing is when this happens is you know that there was 13 people on this listing trying to make money now there's 12 which means one of them sold out right so that's a very key point right so, and then you can see here, right? The different changes. This is also another thing that I like looking at on variations that I've, I've seen nowhere online, right? So we'll just kind of go into it. So if you zoom in, so here, I know we're super close. We're super close up. You might be like, Cody, what is even happening right now? Right? But basically, do you see how that sales rank changes and then the offer count changes? That lets me know that more than likely a sale did occur because the sales rank changed and the offer count changed at the sale the same time. So that lets me know that a sale more than likely occurred. What I really like to see is when that happens, here we'll, we'll zoom in again. Hopefully we can find one. Yeah, like right here. This is a perfect example. So this is what I absolutely love to see is not only did the sales rank change, the offer ch count changed, and the buy box changed. So you can see that the buy box changed. There was this guy, CR Essentials. He was on it, uh, you know, on the buy box. Then basically, and the buy box is that magenta, this magenta line right here. So he got buy box, he sold, and then the offer count went down because he sold, and then the buy box changed, right? So these are all the like key points that will help you make a decision. I know it's a lot of information, but like these are, this is exactly what I do. This is super useful information. This like, this, this makes money. <laughs> I don't notice that, that this has made me a ton of money. Um, so just getting right into it. There's some other stuff, right? So we'll go, we'll look at seller amp. So looking at seller amp, 
The estimated sales, so this is the biggest misconception I have ever seen, and I've seen people lose a ton of money by not understanding how to do this. So they look at the estimated sales, and then they go, oh, you know, the estimated sales here is 36. That means this shoe sells 36 times. That is 100% a, like, that's false. Just because Seller Amp says that this sells 36 times, that doesn't mean it sells 36 times. This is saying, out of all the variations, they're estimating that it sells 36 times. I find that this estimate to be off a lot of the time, like a lot of the time. And, you know, anybody else is going to tell you, oh, yeah, Seller Amp, you know, get Seller Amp, this and that, right? I use Seller Amp, it's a good product, but I just want to say that, like, if somebody's just telling you cut and dry, that's not how this actually, if you actually like run it, that's not how this works, right? So just getting right into it. BSR, so best sales rank. If an item has less than 3% BSR, usually it sells pretty decent. I just want to put that out there. I don't really like looking at BSR that much, but if the item has a 1% BSR, you know, really like it. If it has 2% BSR, you know, it's pretty all right. And 3% BSR, it's like, okay, this is probably more of like a slower moving product. That's kind of how I look at BSR. So I'm, I have all these different data points, right, that we're making the decision on. There's all these different data points. And basically after this video, you're going to connect all these data points and then make educated decisions for yourself, right? So we're just going to get right into kind of the lifeblood of like variationless. This is the important stuff of variations that I always look at. When I look at a variation listing, I always look at this. So we'll just get right into it. So you go to data offers and you might be wondering, like, what is this? What is the offers tab? So this shows you the current people that are selling on this listing and trying to make money. And if you, if you check this box, so this is only the current people. We don't care about just the current people. We want to know everybody that's made money on this listing before so we're going to hit include historical offers and now since the historical offers are clicked right you can see the people that are in stock they're selling out and making money and at what price point so like all the guesswork is just gone all of it's gone all the guesswork doesn't exist it's gone right for the most part right uh because you can see in here that this person they had 16, they, my bad, they had nine stock. And this is what I call a stair step. It's stair stepped down. So they had nine stock and then went all the way down to five. So they sold four right there, right? And then here you can see, you know, this guy had four and then it stair stepped down to two. Let's see if you can see that. And you can zoom in on these by like click, you click and drag and it zoom in. See that? Click, drag, zoom in, right? So it was at four and then went to two. So we know he sold two stock and then also at the price point he sold it right here, right? So that's the thing about this is it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. And I'll kind of show you exactly, you know, how I read all of these in a moment. But like this, I call that, I just kind of make up words because there's no, there's no videos on this. So that's why I'm making this, right? I The people have spoken, right? So we're, we're making the video. So here, you can see there's one stock and then they, they, they're they gone. So that I call that a straight line and basically that means that they had one stock and then they sold out and then they kind of moved on with their day, right? And then there's all sorts of stuff. See, we see a stair step here, went from two to one to zero. So that person sold two. So this, this is all data that you're using to make an educated decision. And I really want to preface this by saying like Keepa is very good and I've spent the past two years really learning how to read Keepa extremely well. And the Keepa is not everything. The best data you're going to get is actually by going on the listing and selling on it. But this will just kind of mitigate a lot of the risk of buying and selling uh, something that you think that, that, you know, sending in something and then being like, oh man, it didn't sell, right? So this is showing you what other people did, how they sold. So a lot of the guesswork is gone. So let's go into the variations tab. So this is an extremely important tab. And you might be thinking like, Cody, like we went through the video so far and you didn't even talk about the variations tab yet, right? But the thing is, this tab is good. And 
a lot of people really like this tab, but I really like I, I, I've showed the other ones first because they're insanely important. This is important too, but the other ones are insanely important. So that's why we went over that. But here you can see the ratings. So we got the ratings here. So the basically what I did there, I just kind of did it automatically. But if you click this ratings, you can sort by highest to lowest. So generally speaking, the more ratings a product has, the more it's going to sell. Because for somebody to leave a rating, just talking about ratings for a second, for somebody to leave a rating, it, it, there's a certain ratio, right? And there's no really perfect ratio, but let's say every 100 people that buy this shoe, maybe one of them leaves a review, right? So then that kind of gives you an idea of how many people are actually leaving reviews on this. So you can see this shoe, 54 reviews, so that's a lot of reviews, 49. And this is just for size, so you can see here, that's just for size nine, right? Just size nine right there, right? We have size eight and a half right there, right? 49 reviews. So this sells, and then you can see this one, it it doesn't sell, like, almost at all. I have one rating, right? This has zero ratings, zero ratings, zero ratings. And I really want to press, this, like, I want to emphasize that whatever you know you hear online this and that like try out yourself i've sold on listings before that have had one rating it just didn't sell very well but it did sell and i did make money right so i'm not telling you guys to not sell stuff that doesn't have ratings right it might be a new listing and nobody got the chance to rate it yet and you might have to pioneer it right but if you don't want to pioneer it and you just want to buy stuff that already sells you can look okay this has ratings right it people are selling right so we'll just look at the sizes so we got size nine we'll analyze size nine so you can see based off of this i'm just going to run this through how exactly i would do it so i already put in the buy cost these are at puma.com you can use this code so big save is the code so forever whoever's watching this if you're interested in puma big save you could also use discounted gift cards and cash back portals to get the buy cost even lower we're not going to talk about that in this video but if you want to learn that and how to make be a more profitable business, you know, definitely watch that other videos on the channel. But we're just kind of getting right into it. So here we have the the you know the variation. So every time, every time I look at a keep a listing, I go to data offers, include historical offers. I see, okay, this guy he sold, let's see, he sold from nine to uh, looks like four. So he sold about five pairs. He sold about two pairs there. This guy sold about a pair, right? One pair. So this lets me know, okay, this guy sold two pairs, right? So this lets me know that, you know, it's selling, but it's not, this one's selling, but it's not selling like crazy, right? And then we see the offer count fluctuating. So this lets me know, okay, it is selling somewhat. So this is something I would probably test by like, one to four units on really this is something i probably buy like two of and then move on not going insanely deep on it uh but like i said keep us not everything the best data you're gonna get is by actually being on the listing so this is something that you know i test by like two or three see what happens and let's go to eight and a half so eight and a half buy box suppressed a lot of people say so when it's buy box suppressed there's no buy it now button a lot of people are saying oh man you know scared of buy box suppressed listings there's a ton of money to be made on buy box suppressed listings and so we can see here data offers so i'm just going into it like i you know like i normally would when i'm reviewing leads we're just waiting for it to load we got data offers and i'm going to include historical offers and then there we go and now we can see okay so this guy he sold he had five and then we all he went all the way down to one so he sold four right there this guy had four and we he went all the way down to one so that guy sold like three this guy sold like two this guy sold like two right he's priced at 54 so it just lets us know okay so you, you know you could test by like two or three this guy also sold at 6750 right while this guy sold at 40 or my bad 54 34 but they sold around the same amount so you know let's look at this graph too so this is possible that you could sell it at that higher price that's why reading variations like 
we're, we're going to continue on, but like reading variations is so important because you might see an inflated price, but you don't know if it sells at that inflated price. Really, by looking at this and seeing, okay, the offer count, we'll go back. So the offer count here, there was 11 sellers and then it, it, they were priced at 54, right? This guy's priced at 54 and then they sold, right? So then the offer count went down and then the price went, went up. So that person definitely sold. So you know, okay, it does move at $54. A lot of with variations, you're trying to figure out, does it move at this price point? That's like the whole thing. Does it move at this price point? Because as arbitrage sellers, you know, we obviously want to make the most profit, but sometimes the price is inflated, but it doesn't necessarily sell at that inflated price. So getting right into it here. So just looking at this, okay, we know it sells at $47.99. We know it would sell at... Uh, 50 49 so I'm just seeing that because the offer count is changing and then we're gonna go to data offers and just kind of look at it so here data offers not too much information so this is really where you look at the other aspects that's why I was saying it's like a it's like there's all these different data points that we have to look at so there's not too much here in the offers but that doesn't mean it that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't sell right so we're going to go back here so you can see, you know, it sold a little bit, right? Because the offer count's changing. And the only worry that I have is this guy kind of, like this guy had the buy box for a while at $47.99. So that kind of concerns me that he was on there for so long, but maybe he did have a few pairs. We really just don't know, but uh, we'll just look at the next, uh, you know, next size. So this is size seven and a half. Just getting right into it. So you can see this guy, it was priced at $54.95. He undercut at $50.99 and then it went up. So that's how we know, okay, this guy hopped on here, he sold. And then, he, you know, somebody somebody else went on the listing, right? And started making some money. So we'll go to data offers, include historical offers. So I'm just sorting by most sold up here. And then you can see this guy moved one. This guy, we got a straight line here. He moved one, right? So we're looking here. This guy moved two. So that's that's pretty cool too. He moved two, right? So hopefully you're getting the idea of this. So I want to look at, we'll look at a bad example right here of this shoe. So this is a men's shoe in a pink colorway, right? So some of this too is intuition. So you think, all right. A men's shoe in a pink colorway, hopefully we can all agree on this, doesn't sell as well as a plain white shoe, right? How many men want to buy a shoe in a pink colorway? Like nothing against pink, nothing. If you want to wear that, that's fine. But generally speaking, more people are going to want the white shoe that's just all white, right? Than the men's shoe in pink. And the data reflects that. So we're gonna look at this right here. Didn't even look at the keeper graph, completely explains it. So there's literally one person on this, one offer count the whole time. Let's see, let's see. So it says that they sold a few pairs, which is possible because of the only person that has this. But really, I mean, it seems like they're selling, so February, April, March, April. So they might be selling like one a month, right? So super slow. While compared to the other pairs, it was selling multiple per month, right? So some of this is just basic common knowledge of like just looking at the shoe, reading the title. Okay, is it men's? Is it a clean colorway that somebody would like? Colorway is just the color of it. And I find the colorways that do well is like, you know, just white, plain black, black and white, white and black. Uh, some some red shoes do pretty well. And some of the other colors of shoes do pretty decent too. But really just the basic shoes do well. Blue does all right, right? So blue does pretty good sometimes. Now let's just look at a shirt listing. So now we got this Nike shirt. So this is a little bit different than shoes. So I just thought I'd give you like, you know, the shoes and then this one, right? So we got the shirt here. So it looks like they got it at Nike.com for 21. 97 if you use like discounted gift card and I'm just gonna like leave this up for whoever right 
So if you wanted to use like discounted gift cards and cash back, you could lower the buy cost a bit down. But in this video, we're just going to be reading the the variations. So getting right into it. So sar size large, got a little tongue twister there. Size large, forty five bucks. Does it sell? Let's play. Does it sell at forty five bucks? So getting right into it. One offer count. So looks like they could have possibly sold here because it was at forty five and then the offer count went away. And then here it just kind of it just kind of like they were in stock for a while and it didn't really sell. You can see this guy thirty four ninety nine. And people might say, Oh, but the the sales rank, the sales rank is at twelve K. The BSR is at one percent. It's a it's a it's a great lead, right? No, it's not. It's not. Based off of this, it's not. Just looking at it, it's it's not. You can maybe make one sale at forty five maybe right so we'll get into here the offers tab says a little bit of a different story maybe this person moved three right uh at 31 so this guy was really moving stuff at 31 so at 31 bucks which would be pretty much unprofitable for us this person moved a lot so they moved four plus pretty quickly so this is something where you know maybe you could move two one to three at 45 bucks but and that's just for size large just really want to emphasize that size large and blue but you're not going to be moving an insane amount of these right so we're going to be looking at size medium looking at size medium so we can see the current buy box is at 34 what is that 99 and then let's get our Nike shirt here. And then, yeah, so let's just kind of look into it, see how well it's selling. So there's increased competition on this one. So there's 10, so a lot more competition. Looking into it, include historical offers. So this looks, right off the bat, looks like it's moving a lot more. So you can see here, this guy had 10. Then he went all the way down to five. This guy had eight, went all the way down to seven. This guy had three, went down to two. So this is moving, you know, semi-decently, uh, but the competition's increased. So there's different ways you can try to figure it out, but I really just like to kind of look at the graph and test by and see what's up. So really based on this ROI and margin and all that stuff, I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't personally buy this unless it gets further discounted, but you know, it's just, it's just another lead and I would say this probably moves if I were to hop on the listing probably moves like one to three times a month maybe I could sell one to three so I really want to reiterate the point the data you get from actually being on the listing is the best method there's no other better method than that there are errors in the software Keepa is not perfect as much as we love Keepa it's not perfect and being on the listing Selling on it will give you the best data and the data that nobody else knows. Ugly keeper graphs do make money a lot of the time because other sellers don't want to deal with it and they think it's bad. So I like to just test it out, see what happens, and that's what's work working. So that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. 